Before I get to tonight's program, there's a few things we're going to do. One is um, I want to just thank all our volunteers that help us make this festival run as smooth as it does. And um, last year, we became a Academy Award qualifying festival in the short documentary category. Yeah, which is a, it's, it's something we're proud of. And tonight, I'm gonna announce the winner of this year's short documentary award. The, we had a jury for this. Um, the jury was comprised of Karen Holmes, who uh, is a professor emeritus at San Francisco State University, uh, a great filmmaker, and also another great filmmaker uh, and a great friend of mine, Ellen Bruno. Yes. And another wonderful filmmaker who we screened a film of his a few years ago, and his name is Jason Cohn, and he has a, a new show on CNN with, um, anyway, he has a new film, show on CNN. Um, and together they decided the winner, and I'm gonna read their statement. An unflinching look at a former soldier's change of heart and his effort to document injustice in his community. The film is a simple yet universal example of speaking truth through the camera. The film Short Doc Award for 2019 goes to Andreas Galagos for his film Guy Hirschfeld, A Guy with a Camera. He's going to talk in a second. The film is screening tomorrow, tomorrow, in the short doc program. But now he's going to speak, and uh, this is his cash award. Um, well, first of all, uh, thanks, Jay, for this um, introduction. Well, um, this award, I would like to say that is uh, dedicated to Guy Hirschfeld, who is the main subject of, my, of our film and who is an ex-Israeli soldier who, na who now fights um, for uh, Palestinian um, rights, Palestinian communities, and his only weapon is uh, a camera. I would like to, de to dedicate this award to him. I would also um, like to thank to uh, our team, um, to Molly Stewart, uh, the producer of the film, and to Arash Maleki, the editor, who is um, over there sitting. Um, and to also Daniel Bernardi, who is uh, the executive producer of um, El Dorado Film. And El Dorado Film is a Bay Area film collective that is um, focused in films about uh, social change. So I'm very happy to be receiving this award tonight. Thank you. So, now on to tonight's program, The Amazing Jonathan Documentary. Yeah. So, um, you know, each year we go to the Sundance Film Festival. We have a list of films that we are going to see because we heard they're Jewish, uh, some Jewish content, or they have a tikkun olam aspect. And uh, to be honest, this film was not on our list even though uh, I saw that the director's name was Ben Berman, uh, the subject matter didn't say anything about um, Jewishness. Um, but I have a, I guess, a, a real interest ever since I was a little kid in magic. And I had this break in my schedule. And I was so thrilled because I really wanted to see this film. And as I'm watching it, I'm thinking, this could be at our festival. This is Jewish family, and Ben's Jewish, and I just wanted this to work. And uh, it was such a wonderful film, and I was so excited after seeing it. Um, and as a filmmaker myself, this is a film that really spoke to my heart. So 
luckily we got the film and even equally luckily, we have the director Ben Berman here. Ben Berman began as an editor for comedians Tim and Eric and went on to direct episodes of Lady Dynamite and Man Seeking Woman, as well as pilots and series for John Benjamin Has a Van and Comedy Bang Bang. Berman premiered his short film, I'm a Mitzvah, which we showed in 2014, and it starred Ben Schwartz. A nice little connection here is that we're showing a film Saturday night called Falling Di Standing Up, Falling Down, and it stars Ben Schwartz and Billy Crystal. So there's a connection between these two films. Um, Ben also made a film called How to Lose Weight in Four Easy Steps, starring Beck Bennett, which was also at the Sundance Film Festival, and the Amazing Jonathan documentary is his first feature-length documentary. Please welcome to the Castro stage, director Ben Berman. Thank you very much uh, for coming out to see a movie that you probably don't know anything about. Um, so thanks for the, for the you know, leap of faith. Um, yeah, the movie is not Jewish at all, but I think at the core of it, it's very Jewish. Because it has, I must be so Jewish as a director that it just exudes Jewishness. But um, I think if anyone's ever experienced a problem, you'll get it, you'll like it. So stick with the movie, it's a really weird one. So sorry in advance, but I think you're going to enjoy it. So stick around for a Q&A after, and um, uh, thank you. And th thanks for the film festival for having us. Thanks, bye. <laughs> so um, I'm going to ask you a few questions first, and then we'll open it up. And I'm imagining the audience feels like they just went on a roller coaster ride like I did the first time I saw this. Um, one, one interesting thing, at watching it again, at the very end, you have this line um, in voiceover of, I think it's Jonathan's mother saying, I'm proud of him. And I, I just couldn't help thinking that that was your mom, too. So, Yeah, nice. let's, I don't want to get emotional, but yes. <laughs> yeah, very nice. Um, could you, I know you've compared this film to a magic trick, and I was wondering if you could Tell the audience what you mean by that. Yeah, I, I, I have to refigure that out for myself, I think. Well, how is it a magic trick? Well, A, I think the way this movie is kind of um, presented to the world the, in the log lines and, and all that, the description that's given to anyone before they see the movie is, is not the full <laughs> what you really get. So you kind of sign up for one thing and then we give you another, which is kind of like a magic trick. We're gonna, a magician says, I'm going to do something, you know, I'm going to do one thing, then they end up making that thing disappear, and then they bring it back. It's a, it's a journey, you know, every magic trick is kind of a journey, so uh, I think this film is kind of a similar thing. What else? How is it also a magic trick? Well, I think we, <laughs> we kind of pulled, not, we didn't pull a trick on Jonathan, but the fact that at the end of the movie, you know, we give him what he's always wanted, and like everyone comes out a winner. Um, I don't know. It's it certainly wasn't wasn't expected, but it, that's what we that's what we were able to achieve. So, at, at what point did you come up with this brilliant idea to actually go to Simon Chin? For the longest time, I had um, the idea of at least trying to talk to the guy. You know, getting an interview with him. Um, and I always, I just literally put a card up on my board, you know, like when you're making a movie, if it's a, a fiction or, or, you know, a scripted movie or a, a non-fiction movie, you have this cork board and you have cards and scenes, you know, that are written on, on, on cards and you try to make sense of it as you're making it. I always, for the longest time, had talked to Simon Chin, question mark, like for probably over a year. And then finally we actually it made sense to go talk to him, and then we had more motivation to ask him to produce this movie as opposed to theirs. And Yeah, um, I mean, that, that it just moment happened. when you ask him is amazing. Um, it's silly, it's crazy. Did, did he actually do anything other than allow 
his name to be on the film? Yes, Simon Chin is a fantastic, fantastic uh, man and a creative mind. He, he not only gave us his name, um, even though that was like the boiler, you know, the, the more like kind of boilerplate ask, but he like watched the movie, gave us creative notes and helped make it better. And, um, and then in the whole like sales part of the movie, literally we went to Sundance without any buyer or anything and he was instrumental in like getting us a great team to help like sell the movie. So he was absolutely instrumental in, in the creative and the, the actual like business of it. Okay. Um, you know, you're really good on camera. Mm. Yeah. Who, who anybody? <laughs> <laughs> you have this Thank very, you. very deadpan face, and it, it, Jewish it's, face. It's, it's a Jewish very face. Very Jewish, yes. <laughs> and it just says a lot. Uh, and you don't you don't overplay it, and I love that. And I'm just wondering, at what point did you realize that you had to put yourself in the film? Well, that that was a key, you know there there's there was a there was a big decision, right? So. The moment that I found out that there was another competing crew, and the fact that I, I heard their, their, they had ties, or the, the producers were Academy Award winning producers, I had to decide in that moment, was I going to try to compete with these Academy Award winning producers, or should I just give up, because I'm, I'm just a guy who, I've never made a documentary before, I'm, I'm an amateur, so, um, I decided not to give up and to make that part of the story and therefore I had to be a part of the story to fully document that whole experience. So it was either give up or enter into the movie myself and change course and I chose to change course or at least open up the, um, you know, the aperture a little right, bit. Right, right. Yeah. Well, it's a great choice. Um, yeah, thanks. Do you, um, you know, the film feels constructed and I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about what's scripted and what's not scripted, if there is anything that was... Yeah, know, there's, there's nothing f like scripted. Um, you know, this is a lot, I, I really, I get the question a lot and I love the question of how can we believe that this is real? Um, were, are you and Jonathan, were you in on it from the beginning? Was Simon and you in on it? Like, when, where, where did this like, was this manufactured? And no, this is very real. Uh, I think like every documentary, you know, we needed elements to tell the story and we got those by whatever means necessary. But no, for sure, there's nothing scripted. Uh, just like every other doc, we needed to kind of, you know, present it in a, in a, in a meaningful way that makes sense. So hopefully that answers your question. Yeah, well, I think, I think the film brings up a lot of ethics, too, of documentary filmmaking. Um, I even noticed uh, Lisa Califf's name. Who, yeah, do you know Lisa? <laughs> yes. Yeah, she's the best. Um, and I could imagine this film being a great teaching device in, in documentary programs. Has any schools uh, come forward to ask if they could use it? Uh, not, not exactly. Early on, I, I, was her, I heard that... Uh, uh, Ross McElwee might want to screen it at, I think he works at MIT, is that right? Yes. And Ross McElwee is... Um, Sherman's March. Sherman, the, yeah, the, the director of Sherman's March, which was a big influence on this movie. So, so no, no, no one directly has asked, can we use this as a teaching aid? And that would be incredible if they did. Because my failures, my, um, you know, dark journey, uh, if that can be used as someone's tool <laughs> of what not to do, uh, I, I'm cool with that. Yeah, okay, good. Yeah. Um, I guess I have to ask, did you inhale? That's a good question. And that's, the, yeah. So there, there's an, usually the question I get is, so what was meth like, you know? And, and um, there's a, a good answer I give, and I'll give it right now, <laughs> uh, which is, you know, there's, um, you know, there's a big theme of this movie is kind of trying to determine what's truth and what's illusion, what's real and what's not. And still, after the whole making of this movie, there's things that I still don't exactly know what's real and what's not, what's true, what's, what's not. So to answer your question, we still don't know if I did or didn't, or if I inhaled or... <laughs> you just skirt the answer. You don't answer it by answering in a roundabout way. So Lisa Califf would be proud of that answer. Okay, 
got it. I understand. Not guilty. I got it. Um, I know that Jonathan and his wife were at Sundance with you. Can you talk a little bit about what their reaction was to the film and how they yeah. were? That, that was quite a, a heavy duty thing. Um, so for the whole movie took basically two and a half years to make. And through that time, I hadn't shown Jonathan or his wife any stitch of film. And they hadn't seen anything. They had no idea what this movie was. And then we applied to Sundance without them knowing. We got in, and then two days before Sundance was going to, you know, release their, their, you know, whatever lineup. it's, what is it? Lineup. Yeah, their lineup, the announcement of what movies they, they have uh, for this year. Uh, me and my producer, one of my producers, called Jonathan, and we said, hey, we got great news. We got into Sundance. And Jonathan was very happy. And then he was like, well, what? I want to see it. What is it? Like, what, what did you, you weren't supposed to send anyone anything. I was supposed to approve it. And then he got really upset and basically, like, start, like sent me an email threatening, like, he basically was, like, convinced he would hate the movie. I would um, present him in, like, a negative light and question his illness, and he would hate it. And he basically threatened to, like, if he didn't like it, he would shut it down and wouldn't let me release it. It was a big scary moment. So then me and my whole team drove out to Vegas. I was very scared. I was absolutely convinced Jonathan would hate the movie and would maybe try to kill me. And we showed them the movie and they loved it. It was like absolutely insane. From like five seconds in, they just laughed the whole time and they really appreciated it. So Jonathan and, and his wife Anna are big fans of the movie and um, they're, they're definitely helping to promote it and support it and uh, it couldn't have turned out better and I don't know why <laughs> it did. Did you film that scene? No, well, I, my, my friend Kirk, who was a big part of making this movie great, um, he had a like, hidden uh, camera where like, at least when the credits were rolling, you know, uh, when we showed them, he filmed like Jonathan's response and we hugged and it was kind of a beautiful thing. We didn't use it in the movie, but maybe the extra features or something, I don't know. Right. Everything's filmed always. Yes. <laughs> so I think let's open it up to the audience and hear what uh, questions they have because this film does bring up a lot of questions. Yep, they're coming. We have a question on your right, on the aisle. Um, so I'm also a documentary filmmaker and I was like super impressed by your ability to get such like emotion out of your subjects when interviewing them. And it sounds like documentary is not your like field. So how did you achieve such strong interviews? Oh, thank you. Um, I don't know. Uh, I do, you know, you just try to do something and hopefully it works out. I, I think, thank you for saying that this worked out. But yeah, no, historically, traditionally, I'm not a documentarian, even though I, I want to be now. <laughs> um, I've worked in scripted comedy, uh, directing comedy television. But yeah, I don't know. I've always loved documentaries and I think you just have to put yourself there. You just have to take a step forward and and try, and sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't, as proof in, in this movie. Some things didn't work, some things do. Um, I think it's just giving it a good old college try, giving it a shot, but thank you. We have a question in the middle on the aisle. Yes, thank you for that movie. As another a documentary filmmaker, I really appreciated how many, by the way, how many documentary everybody filmmakers has. are in this yeah, everybody Every here. single person is a documentary filmmaker, but thank you. <laughs> um, uh, showing just how impossible a task it is to try to bring reality into 60 to 90 minutes. Um, and you did a really great job. In terms of um, being compared to the Simon Chin films, your film was as impossible to follow or imagine how it would go as Sugar Man, but thank God it was a much better film than Man on a Wire. That was a terrible movie. And Whoa! <laughs> thank you. So, you're, so should I tell Simon that or not? Okay, so rate this movie against Sugar Man and Man on Wire. What's one, two, and three? This one's two? Huh, what? One. One, I'm two, one? three. Yeah. Oh, this guy's good. Thank you. 
No, the, the, yeah, I appreciate that. Um, I, I love Man on Wire. I love Searching for Sugar Man. Um, you know, it's they're way different movies, but uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna look out for your docs. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, we have another question in the middle in the aisle. Thank you. Um, that was a fabulous movie. Um, Thank you. My question is about. You know the game that you go to, like you go to a party and people tell, uh, play the game of two truths and a lie and you have to figure out what the lie is. I thought this movie, I'm wondering if you have other ideas for a project that would similarly teach the concept so strongly about questioning what one sees. Uh, each of my daughters in high school and ninth grade were required to take as part of their English course a segment called Narration Strange, where they try to teach the students not to believe the narrator necessarily. I thought, the, for me, I'm no filmmaker whatsoever, the strongest thing about the movie was it seems like a fabulous way to teach that kind of questioning, and I'm curious if you have other, if you have other ideas of other projects you'll do to similarly so powerfully demonstrate how to question truth or veracity. Thank you. Well, thank you. Um, yes, I, I, I think in, in the nonfiction work that I do moving forward, if I'm lucky enough to do nonfiction stuff again, yeah, there's always an element of, I don't know. Okay, so if, I think if, non, if documentaries are there to seek the truth, I don't even know. I don't know what my thought here is. But yeah, I always want to mess with the form of, of nonfiction. And... Uh, you know, to some degree have the audience be an act... I'll say this, in whatever way I want the audience to be an active participant in whatever non-fiction projects I do. I don't know exactly the shape that'll take, but I think, I think we should all be very bored with being passive audiences and just watching something and everyone doing like an Errol Morris rip off where everyone's talking right into camera. I'm tired of the old way of doing it and, and I would like to be a part of challenging um, you know, old tropes. So, uh, thank you. <laughs> you know, your film is very funny and I'm wondering how you brought your experience working on these comedy shows into the filmmaking. Did you have a sense that you'd bring humor into it ahead of time? Maybe this is where the Judaism really comes in and not in a joke. I feel like there's, there's no project I can do, uh, scripted or nonfiction or anything, that doesn't blend deep sadness and sincerity and, and darkness with comedic levity. I think that is, how many Jews in the audience here? I think that is truly the, the, a, a, a Jewish sensibility. Like, if we talk about the Holocaust, like there's some bits, let's do some bits, <laughs> there's some comedy in there, like that's the way to survive, right? So, um, yes, I, I think the way that I brought, the most value that I can bring, that I brought to this movie and will, you know, in the future bring to other projects, uh, comedic value is through editing. I, I was, I began as an editor in, in comedy and I, I think I got a good sense and, I don't know, learned um, how to punctuate things with an edit and to how, how to elongate things for an awkward pause that could make a laugh. So um, editing is a huge, huge key uh, that I, I use. Yeah. We have time for one more question in the center on your left up here. Hey, welcome to San Francisco and thank you for bringing your film to us. I'm one of the two working magicians in the audience tonight. Uh, my name is Kevin the Cap, and I've met Jonathan several times, and because it's a small world that working magicians live in. And two things. First, I want to say how brave it was of you to face your own neurosis about your mom. And it's very rare to watch a documentary in which the filmmaker has a catharsis and realizes that they're inflicting their neurosis on somebody, and that you were willing to share it with us. I screwed up. It was awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Part two is going to be a little tougher for you. Um, I was standing next I'm to ready. Yeah, yeah. I'm ready for it. Here we go. <laughs> so 14 By the months way, where ago, are you? I'm pretending like I know where you are, and I would like I am to right here. I'm going to stand Great. Thank you. because okay. you have a bright light in you. Great. Thank you. So 14 months, I was at the Magic Castle standing next to the amazing Jonathan, and he radiates illness. He's so clearly sick. He's lost a toe that sloughed off due to bad circulation. If you had made three phone calls, 
to anybody that knows him or is around him, you would have known how deeply ill it was. So another really interesting part of the film is your mortification when you realized how badly you had screwed up and challenging him being sick. I wonder what your process is now realizing that you went down a road that's very, must have been very hard for him, and you, but you also had the integrity to have him face you and call you on the carpet, and it was great. But at what point were you like, Jesus, what did I say to this other human being? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I, it, so we're done. <laughs> <He's> in, um, <laughs> I like how people ask a question and just say thank you, and then we're, I could, we could walk away. Um, the, I'm not exactly sure what the question is. I, I clearly, um, there was no other, there was no other thing to do than to question the validity of his illness. There was so much, um, clear stuff right in front of me. His very, very good friend, Bruce, saying, yeah, I question his, his illness, the validity of his illness, too. And then he, you know, all this stuff, he, he spat it off. And the fact that he's around four years after his death, it's all like, he's a magician, he's an illusionist, he's created, he's deceived people for a living, he's made millions of dollars by deceiving people. Why would we think that he would not be capable of maybe deceiving us, and for whatever reasons, we can think of them for ourselves, right? So as a documentarian seeking the truth, I had to. It was my choice, and, I'm, and, I, and I, I did it. Um, I know that Jonathan is not well uh, now. Um, he's, he's not doing great. He's still alive, but he's really riding around that scooter a lot. And yeah, it's, you know, it sucks that I did that and I put him through a little bit of hell or bummed him out by asking him that, but at the same time, he, went, he put me through hell uh, with all this competition and then like talking to me, not talking to me. So me and him are cool now. We both gave each other a little bit of a, a challenge and I, I can't say I feel too terrible about it, um, for real. Um, we're both very happy with the movie. We're both buds, so all 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 ended well. Um, and yes, I, I did ask Jonathan and Anna uh, to if I could talk to Jonathan's doctor. That of course that would answer a lot of questions, right? And of course they denied me access to that. So it's not like I didn't try to seek the correct, very like direct um, sources to give me the information I was in need of. I was just you know, again, challenged with access. So, um, or not, maybe it's all a magic trick. I don't know what you guys should believe, so. <laughs> well. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Ben. Thank you. Uh, just want to say that this film is showing two more times in, at the Albany Twin at the Rafael Film Center, so please tell your friends, and thank you so much for coming, making this film, Thank and you very much. Being thank, in front of our audience. Thank you. And everyone, please tell your friends, tweet about it, or, or just word of mouth, but, but no spoilers. There's a lot of twists and turns, and we want them to experience that for themselves. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>